In this video, we're going to take a look at the authorization bypass lab in the damn vulnerable web application. It's been a couple of years since I made a video for this series. I didn't realize until recently that they'd made some new labs, so I figured I'd make the videos for the remaining labs. And I do intend to remake this series at some point because I'm not really happy with the quality of the earlier videos. I kind of rushed them, not really expecting them to get very many views, and I hadn't really been making videos very long at the time, so. Every time I get like comments on them and I have to go and review the video to answer questions, I'm always disappointed with particularly the audio quality, but it's kind of hard getting used to talking to, not a camera in this case, but just talking to yourself, I guess. And I think I've got a bit better at it now, so hopefully these next two episodes will be better than the rest of the series if you've been following it through until now. Okay, so let's start with the lab. It says that this page should be accessible by the admin user, and your challenge is to gain access to features using one of the other users, for example, Gordon B slash ABC123. So we're currently logged in as the admin, we're on the low difficulty, and we need to go and log in as Gordon B with ABC123, and then essentially this page is gonna disappear and we need to try and find a way to access it. So let me open up a private window so we can log in as this new user. Go and log in as Gordon. I've already got the credentials saved. And then let's go back down to this lab. So we've got the difficulty on low. We go to, oh, we can't go to the lab. That's right, because the lab's not showing. So what we might do here, first of all, is just have a look at the source code, or we can use the inspector at F12 to actually click here and see what should be there. We could view the source and just search for authorization with Control and F. But there isn't actually anything there in this case. However, if we go back to the page we are on previously, let's refresh this one. Let's go and have a look at Burp Suite. So we'll open up our proxy. You can also just do this with the dev tools as well. That's fine. And here we've got the path. So why don't we just take a copy of this and add this here. So even though we're logged in as Gordon B and we've got the difficulty on low at the moment, we were still able to access this page despite it not being listed. So this is a nice opportunity to talk about what is access control. I'm over on the Port Swigger Web Security Academy at the moment, and I just want to mention is this is something, particularly when getting started, that can be very confusing, is the difference between authentication and authorization. So authentication identifies the user and confirms that they are who they say they are. So for example, when you log into an application, you provide your username and password, and that's what you're doing. You're authenticating yourself proving that you are that user because you have that user's password or you have some kind of biometric data or a two-factor authentication, whatever it may be. Session management identifies which subsequent HTTP requests are being made by the same user. So once the user logs in, how do you track which requests are going from that user and back to that user from the server? So that's the session management. And then access control determines whether the user is allowed to carry out the action they're attempting to perform. So here's the difference, authentication and authorization. Authentication is us logging in and authorization is whether we can access different parts of the application, what we're authorized to do as that user. So we might have a role of admin, or we might have a role of a staff member, we might have a role of a standard user. And it's very important that, for example, a standard user can't simply make a request like we just did there directly to a page without that authorization check being done. And that's also a good time to talk about insecure direct object references. And that's exactly what we've done really. We've accessed an object directly without authorization. Another example here would be if we were trying to access an account, for example, let's say our account was 420, and then we try and change that 420 to 132355 and try to access a page is there any authorization check? Is there anything there to make sure that we are that customer? And if not, then we've got an IDOR vulnerability. If we can access this page without having the authorization that should be tied to that customer, then there's an IDOR vulnerability. Another example is being able to directly access files that you shouldn't have permission to. I realized I forgot to read the objective of the lab. So our goal is to test the user management system at all four levels of security to identify any areas where authorization checks have been missed. Systems only designed to be accessed by the admin user, so we need to look at the calls made when logged in as the admin, and then try to reproduce them when logged in as a different user. And that's exactly what you do in a real application. So if you're able to register a user for free on a bug bounty program, 
and you go and try to perform some actions, maybe it's changing a password, maybe it's updating some information. And then if you go and create a new account, can you send some of those same requests through with a different ID number attached to them? So onto the medium level, it says the developer has locked down access to HTML on the page, but look at how the page is populated when logged in as the admin. So let's go back to our private window. Let's refresh the page. So we've got this in burp as well. And that's the page I'm going to, in fact, let's go back to our non-private window. Let's go and change the difficulty here, change that to medium, submit, and then we'll refresh the page. It's now at medium. Oh, with an admin here. So that's the wrong place. I should be doing it here. All right, change it to medium. We can't go to the page now because that's the whole point of the challenge. So let's grab that URL again from burp. We'll go and paste that in here. And now it says unauthorized. So there's a few things you could try and do here. One thing is we might just want to try and take this to the repeater and see, can we use any other request types? So can we actually, let me change that first to options and we just get unauthorized there. Okay. But maybe we'd be able to try head or maybe we could just change it to a post request change the request method, send unauthorized. All right, so that didn't work, but that's one thing worth trying. I have seen this happen in the past where you're able to get access to information by changing the request method. However, what we can do, if we go back to, I don't have it in the repeater, let me go and find it. So we actually have this get user data.php. So what if we try to access that file directly? And there we go, we get back our data. So this is actually getting the data directly back from the API. It's not in the same format and we're not able to interact with it. We can't change the data from here, although we could, but just not with this get request, but we still get access to the data all the same. Okay, so onto the high level, it says that both the HTML page and the API to retrieve data have been locked down, but what about updating data? You have to make sure you test every call to the site. So let us do that. We can, first of all, let's go and change that to high. We'll submit that and we'll, we can't go, I keep going, trying to go back to the page. I'm just so used to doing that, but we can't. So let's go back to our admin window. I'm going to click update here to update one of the details and then go and grab this request. And there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could basically change our cookie to be the same as the cookie we're using, change the difficulty and the cookie, and that will make this change on our other account the I've forgotten its name now. Um, I always forget the usernames, it's Gordon B. So that's one thing we could do. We could also make the request here while we have open our dev tools. So let's do a update. Oh, let me go to network update. And you could grab this request. You can actually do copy. And then there's a lot of different ways that you can grab this data. You can copy it as a curl command, for example. So you could then just go and paste it into the terminal and go and update whatever you wanted to. But yeah, I'm just going to use Burp Suite. What I'll do is send our, let's go to our high level here. Let me just refresh this page and then I'll send that to the repeater. And then I'm going to grab this cookie, which is set to high and grab that info. And then let's get our update. Send that to the repeater and just change the cookie, send, and there we go. Okay, so that's three IDOR vulnerabilities that we looked at. The first two allowed us to access data that we shouldn't be able to with our level of authorization. So we bypassed that authorization mechanism, which was essentially just to hide the page. And then in the second example, the page wasn't hidden. Well, the page was hidden, but we still couldn't access it directly. It was the actual file that we needed. And then the final one allowed us to modify information which we shouldn't be able to. So three different IDOR vulnerabilities. Again, these are the sort of things you might see in an application where you see like a password reset procedure or something like that. I didn't really do too much testing on the impossible level. Maybe there are some vulnerabilities. It does say that there might be some non-authorization related issues, but if you do find any authorization issues on here with the impossible level, then you can report them on the GitHub because maybe there are some issues which nobody has found yet. Normally in these videos, I review the source code as well. 
but the source code wasn't displayed for these levels. In fact, the first couple of levels, it actually said there wasn't anything of interest, I believe. In this case, it says you can have a look at these two files for vulnerabilities, but it's not displaying them here, so I'm going to skip it in this instance. And the next video then, we'll be looking at the open HTTP redirect, and then hopefully after that, before there's any new labs, I'll get a chance to go back through and remake some of these episodes in a better quality format. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.